Tell me what you see when you look at me. Do you see another brother lost in these streets looking for his soul? Trying to find my soul. Or do you see another brother searching for lost souls in these streets? A street soldier. Street soldier. Here to help you get that chip off your shoulder. Warm your colder days and sober your drunken ways. And find a way to help you get over these hurdles placed in our path. And this is not meant to amuse you. This is for all those who have questions but are afraid to ask. I'm so I won't be afraid. I won't be afraid. No. When times get hard, you lose your way. Open your mind and hear what I say. This is a message for the hard and the soft. To those who tune in weekly and to those who keep an eye out for 8 p.m. on Sundays and turn their radios off. The truth hurts. The cloth has been pulled. We're walking around half dead. Use this show as your IV. Alive and free is a new movement. We've achieved self-destruction. A street soldier promotes self-improvement. Streets couldn't be no colder. So I gotta be a soldier. It shouldn't be this hard for me. Even when it seems so hopeless, I gotta keep my focus. I'm glad to be alive and free, yeah. Streets couldn't be no colder. So I gotta be a soldier. It shouldn't be this hard for me. Even when it seems so hopeless, I gotta keep my focus. I'm glad to be alive and free, yeah. All right, here we go, folks. Live and free radio, Street Soldiers. Yes, we're going to do it a first, a first, a first, a first on Street Soldiers. We are going to do a show on relationships. And I think the closest we've ever come to doing something, you know, this show is about keeping people alive and free. It's a Stop the Violence show. Is, you know, we've talked about domestic violence, uh, which obviously is, you know, unhealthy relationships uh topics we've done before what's love got to do with it which is in the same vein uh but we've never really done a show just on relationships principally because dr marshall has no answers (laughs) i can't help you i can i can help you stay alive and free i can give you a lot of information about history and culture you know i might even branch out into a you know a few other things but with this I have no answers. So then I said, I will turn to Lady Estelle, and she will then do the show. And she told me. No. (laughs) (laughs) But y'all are are geniuses. Y'all know everything. We have our specialty. There's no question about our intelligence. (laughs) It's not one of them. (laughs) Wisdom, knowledge, and expertise. (laughs) There's no question about that. But we've been asked to do the show. I mean, Miss Demetra was here, and she's like, can we do a show? Can we do a show on love? Can we do a show on relationships? You know, and I, we've asked at times for the audience to give us feedback and what they like to talk about, and they have said that. So I said, okay, all right, it's time. We'll do it. But I need someone. I need someone who, you know, can be the point person and, 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 and really somebody who is a relationship G U R U. You know what that word is? Guru. Mm. Guru. Mm. Somebody who takes us on and wants to do it as part, you know, as, as part of his or her life. And so I found a person. I found a person. Is it me? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you would have been notified who by so now. Fam- who is familiar? Who I will say, I will say he got his start on Street Soldiers, but I will say he got his launch to fame on Street Soldiers. And, uh, I, you know, I called him and I said, man, I want to do this show on relationships and you're doing this all over the literally the world. Uh, and so would you mind doing it? And he said, Doc, man, I love to. I love to. I love to. Now, this is very hard for him to do because he is located in Florida right now, which is he is three hours ahead of us. And uh, he just got back in town. So he might be sleepy, but he said he'll do it. So let's bring to the Street Soldier Airwaves our friend, the the, the only real gentleman that I know, <laughs> Mr. Anatine Bariola II. Hi, Anatine. That was the greatest introduction, man. I'm I'm sitting here like smiling ear to ear, like 
it means a lot to me. It really does. Uh, we have an amazing history together, and it's it's so cool to hear you even reference me like that. You know, it's it's you're a legend. Lady Estelle's a legend. So just to even be spoken to in that way by you all is such an honor, such a high honor. So I'm I'm really happy. It's a great time in life. And I'm happy to be on the show, man. Let's get into it. You're sweet. Thank you, man. You're thank so you. sweet. Thank hey, you. in a time. Th- thank you, you for doing this, voice. man, because it's late. You as well. And, and uh, you know, you got a family and a whole bit. And they be like, why don't you spend time with me on the phone? Like, well, but <laughs> no, I'm ready, man. I'm, I'm ready. I haven't spoken to the day in so long. I'm excited. Like, let's, let's, let's get into it. So I'm going to, first, I got to tell everybody who you are. Now, in a time, I just want okay. you to know that I went to Wikipedia. And 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 I was like, damn, this brother blew the hell up. So I, <laughs> I remember the day you came in. We was upstairs. You just read the book. So I'm gonna read to everyone who Mr. Anton Barriola II is. Uh, let's see. Uh, he's from uh, born in San Jose, California. Uh, he completed his early education at Piedmont High School. In uh, uh, he attended. Fam you. Man, I know you went to Fam you. Yes. Lord, praise oh, the Lord. Yeah. Where Absolutely. he where Absolutely. he studied computer information systems. Barry Ola st- started writing at the age of 25. He is a three-time man, it, I'm telling you, this read so good. Three-time best-selling author, <laughs> celebrity ghostwriter, columnist of Soul Train, and contributor to the Essence magazine for relationship advice columns. Now, if you're contributing to Essence for relationship advice, you automatically yeah. go to the top of the of the well, chain. Well, that was written a while ago, so I've I've, I've since uh, you know don't write for Essence anymore. But I, mean, I was just at Essence a few days ago. Um, we have a, a great relationship, and they cover and uh, cover a lot of my events and the things I have going on. They show me so much love. Shout out to Charlie Penn and the whole Essence family. Well, I figured this thing is enough today because you're doing things every day that Wikipedia can't keep up with. So. <laughs> <laughs> Barryola is also yes. the CEO of the Barryola S Group, a creative branding and publishing company based in uh, Greater Los Angeles. Yeah, this is old. I just this is there. So um, let me get this. Now, this is the one Barryola. I want to get to. Barryola authored his first book, Barryola S, the Contemporary Gentleman and Etiquette Book for the Urban Sophisticate in 2009. It was a groundbreaking book, my words. The book was published by, I would say the book was, it became an Amazon Kindle bestseller. Uh, it is required reading. Now, is this true? Bariola esque is required reading at several colleges. Uh, it said here, Bermuda State and Kansas State University. In 2013, you published your second book, Gentlewoman, Etiquette for a Lady from a Gentleman. The book explores the demise of femininity and class in contemporary society. Uh, Gentlewoman also uh, attributes commentaries from Hill Harper. Everybody know who Harper is? I do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Amen. And uh, the book also features contributions from prominent celebrities, including Megan Good. Now, next time you see, see Megan, just tell her Dr. Marshall says she all right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Grammy Award winner Michelle Williams and Brian Michael Cox. It says here the Gentlewoman became a bestseller. Ladies, so listen to this. And is translated one of the top bestsellers translated in Lithuania. Yeah. Is that true? It's true. That's true. It's. Uh, I mean, I have the, some of the copies at home, and it's that whole situation was amazing. But I don't even know what the stuff says. You know, I just have it kind of as a reminder of how <laughs> Lithuania. How it's, it's gone so far beyond me. You From know what San I mean? Jose. The books have gone so far to yeah, Lithuania. Yeah, between Oakland, though. I, San Jose and Oakland. Let's not forget. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's it's. it's it's all amazing to me. It really is. Um, that's a trip. Okay, really I'm keep is. going here. Let me keep going here. In two thousand, in December two thousand sixteen, he published his third book, The Gray, a relationship etiquette study. The book is a study of relationships as inspired by true events. Uh, the Gray debuted as a, as fine art. And uh, you know all of this, okay? Uh, yes. Also, let's see a whole bunch of other stuff. Is and, man, it, it, so you are. Let's put it like this. You are well qualified to talk about relationships. Oh, listen, one more thing. You were awarded the Power 30 Under 30 Award by Porsche in 2011. So you, you don't blow yourself up, so I got to do this, right? Uh, you were selected by Black Enterprise Magazine, Young and Bold Business Leader in 2013. 
and you appeared on multiple nationally broadcast TV and radio channels, including Fox News, NBC Nightside Centric, TV One, and with Roland Martin. Hey, you know what it says in here? Listen. Look, what does that oh, say? Man. And KMEL. Oh, wow. They put us in there. All right, sir. With yeah. that, with that, welcome once again, man. And I see you've been everywhere. You've been everywhere. But, but, and I, and I guess, you know, what I, I do is you, I, I, what really got this is I saw you on um, Sister Circle. Sister Circle, mm -hmm. which is the, it was mm -hmm. on TV One. Uh, they had you on for about seven minutes, and you couldn't. So the minute you walked on and sat down, and you know, in your in your very gentlemanly style, they descended on you with a bunch of questions about relationships. <laughs> and I'm watching. I said, you 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 couldn't get the answer out fast. They were asking, well, what you, uh, so you have a lot more time tonight. They need to invite you okay. back uh, to do that, but but. You, you, you have, then, then, first of all, let me ask, ask you, why have you stepped into this niche? Why have you taken this on when, when just, I'm just curious about that. I don't, you know, that's a great question. I think a lot of times in life we have like our own goals and desires and some, somehow along the way there's a, a chance to pivot. And sometimes that pivot is an option and other times it's kind of thrusted upon you, right, where you're forced to pivot. But I think a lot of people who are doing amazing things maybe that wasn't the exact plan right yeah at least that's my story so um i, I really think it's, it's just purpose driven really you know like i, I kind of shy away from terms like relationship guru and that type of thing because it's it's you know i don't think anyone's necessarily an expert unless you know maybe they're in the medical field or scientific academic field so um i don't have a degree in, you know in relationships to back up what I'm saying, it's, it's really just uh, a gift that allows me to be empathetic beyond just the feeling. You know, I almost can feel what's going on with somebody, right, without them saying a word to me. Um, it's, a, it's a deep connection and um, something I can't really explain. And the wisdom that I've had at, like, a young age, I can't explain that either, right? Uh, I think our gifts are something that we can't. Explain. We just give glory and credit to God. Well said. Well said. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess you jumped into an area, uh, and and you're not like. And I've seen quote relationship experts, and I could name some names, but I'm not. But but I've watched you. <laughs> I'm not. No, not really, because it's a different thing when I watch you and the conversation. Even our sister circle, the conversations you had and questions they were hitting you with, and and then these are four women hitting you, hitting this brother with all these questions, right? But even at your events, uh -huh. you know, when you have your events, it's it's, it's mm -hmm. there's a different different vibe. And, and what do you mean? And, uh, yeah, it's just the way. Even even on that show, you were so. Uh, disarming, I guess is the mm. word I want you, because they wanted mm. answers, and a lot of times you get into that, and everybody's ready to throw darts, just for, you know, from the stuff that they've had, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but you're able, but you've always been able to do that. You've just been able to disarm and then state your point, and I've seen you get people, those women, even then, I've, you got them to think, and to stop and reflect and you know you're really good at that and i think if it's an area that needs that more than anything wow. is this whole thing of you know with relationships because you know so so much of it is is you go into these groups and you know as you might as well, you, and i use the word dark because that's a lot of mm -hmm. that's what it is you know people throwing this throwing arrow slinging arrow slinging this but you i even i remember the first night you came here you, you just have a way and and I really believe for, for this, you got to do that. You got to be able to do that. And so, absolutely. I, 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 and, and you have these conversations in Atlanta. You have them in, just talk about some of the events that you put on um, where this comes oh. up all the time. So, uh, we've done so many in the past. I mean, you all attended the Exhibit Great Tour. It's like a sold out tour that we toured for about two years, but we just started a really unique event. I'm just getting back from New York and we were in DC for the inaugural event called Four Women Only. So mm -hmm. essentially 
it's for women only. So no men allowed unless, you know, you're the cameraman. Shout out to Parsons who tours with this, but uh, it's three married friends of mine. So it's myself, it's Kenny Burns, and it's Steve Canal. And we have about 30 years of marriage between us. Um, so it's an interesting dynamic, an interesting perspective where we're not there with any ulterior motive, right? There are There is no contamination for men in the room. It's just us. So when women are speaking and laying out their grievances and telling the truth and their honesty, we're receiving that information. Clearly, we're hearing them. We're giving them feedback and dialogue. And a lot of the women who are there are either married or single or dating guys that used to be like us because, you know, like a gentleman, yes, but I was definitely a playboy, right? And everyone comes from different perspectives and backgrounds, so it just adds to the, to the conversation and the experience. And essentially what we're doing is we're getting this information from women and we're giving that information to men. So at the same time that we're doing this, simultaneously we're having events for men only. And when I say events, I use that term lightly because these aren't anything, this isn't anything that's publicized in the same way that for women only is publicized. Mm. It's a private mm. conversation that we have amongst brothers and we're sharing the information and the insights that we get from for women only in order for both of us to get together on a healthy playing field. Because now, if you do an event with men and women, it's just going to be a bunch of bickering. Like, mm. women are going to be excited to have an opportunity to have the ears of men, and men are going to be defensive. Mm. So there's going to be no solutions. And if anything, the women will leave with their lives and the men will leave with their lives. But the problem will be even worse. So the whole goal is truly to cause a, a shift and a wave in the state of relationships, you know, it's, it's a different day and age from when I wrote Gentlewoman. Times have changed. Mm-hmm. Women have progressed tremendously, right? There's still um, still room to go, but, you know, every time I go in front of the scenes and behind the scenes, it's always women that I see, and they're elevating in their careers and their personal lives. They're going on wellness retreats, and, you know, they're investing in their, 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 their mental state and just their wellness and spirit and the physical. And in the meantime, a lot of men are kind of just sitting back and watching that happen. What's going to happen in three to five years to the state of relationships, right? There's going to be a, a greater shift, a greater divide. So I'm forecasting and trying to do my part now to try to contribute to the state of relationships because before – we can talk about, like, you know, ownership and, and um, progression within our culture, right? Like, before we can talk about um, just all of these, all these progressive conversations that we're having, we have to get healthy first. Mm. Men and women have to get healthy first. Black mm. men and black women have to get healthy mm. first mm. before we can even have any type of economic conversation or political conversation. We've got to be right. That's foundational. Um, so you're, you're, you, when I hear you saying, and let's go back to the groups, the four women only groups, you're sort of the, the conduit. <laughs> you're the go-between. Yeah. You're taking the information uh, from, the, from the ladies and delivering it to the men uh, because, and I agree with you, that delivery probably couldn't happen or, and I've been part of those groups or seen those groups <laughs> when they're together, right? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah you're, right, you're right. And unfortunately, despite the best of intentions, you know, because mm-hmm. I think it's it's whatever's going on on each side. And so that I, I think that's a really good strategy. Um, uh, and it's just so much stuff. See, so you're talking stuff pops into my mind. What are the, can I just ask, what are some of the things they say uh, just wow. that, there's just a, if you can remember some of the things that they so much. It's uh, I'll say a few. The, the the great thing that I'm learning is there's so many different perspectives informed by experiences. So yeah. you can have a room full of 50 women, and you know 30 of them don't relate to each other because they've had entirely different experiences growing up in their lives. Um, yesterday, right now, they're going through different things and they're at different stages. And through those experiences, they, you know, they, they learn 
what applies to them and react or act accordingly. So, you know, you can have like a woman who who experiences infidelity mm-hmm. and instead of that woman becoming bitter, she learns like what why the guy cheated or why, you know, if it's the other way around, why the woman cheated. And in learning that reason, she then adopts a similar lifestyle where maybe she becomes, um, you know, she, she gets an open relationship because she values honesty more so than anything. It wasn't the idea that the man cheated. It was the fact that he was dishonest. Um, these, these are real situations, right? So it's interesting when you have a room full of women sharing information to us because not only are we learning, but we're also teaching. And uh, just in New York, I heard the conversation of men feel like we always want to be the providers. And that usually kind of is reflected financially. If we want to provide financially. It's how we were raised and what we were taught. What I'm hearing is that sometimes providing, because now that women are their own providers, right? Like mm-hmm. I made the comment, and it was provocative that women are becoming the men that they need. Mm. And the rebuttal to that was that they're becoming the men that they need because they realize that they don't need men to be in power, to be successful, to be independent, right? Like women have taken initiative and stepped into those roles. And in, in return, a lot of men are feeling like useless. We feel like, well, if you got it all, you know, and, and Meg the Stallion and all these other artists are contributing to this dialogue, and it's dope. Like, you should celebrate independence, right? Like, you should celebrate self-sufficiency, forgive me, not independence, self-sufficiency. You should, should celebrate the fact that you can do things on your own, but it gets lost where it's so celebrated that it's almost seen as something that's like, you know, a defense mechanism turns, it feels like an offensive gesture, and we feel left down and like, you don't need us for anything except maybe physically or intimately, right? And it's like the tables have turned the ways that women used to feel a lot of men are feeling. And we're not communicating that, so women don't know that. What I'm learning is that although we feel that way, women still desire the same things. Nothing has changed. They still desire to be honored. They still desire to be protected. You know, like these, these elements are still in play, but we don't honor and protect because we feel like we're not even useful anymore. So women are making more money than men, and it's, there's just this shift in, in what we've seen historically, and, you know, it's, it's causing a lot of insecure men, insecurities in men to surface, but we're just not communicating it. So the way it's manifested, it, it looks crazy. You know what I mean? It looks, it, it, it looks like we're not interested. It looks like we're too busy with our own careers um, in order to, you know, meet you where you are. It looks like, um, you know, it just, it, it just looks a myriad of ways. And I'm trying to let folks know, like, hey, listen, I think we want the same things. I think we just communicate it differently. I, I'm at the end of the day, that, we want the same thing. I'm going to write that line down. <laughs> I think that might be the... Yeah, that's a very powerful line. I think we want the same things. Um, because it seems, you know, like, again, the whole, <laughs> and another thing I'm learning, it's, and I've, I've known this, right, but just to hear it reiterated and see the importance of communication, that's like the lifeline to any relationship. Communication. You have to talk. You have to talk. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's, we, we've got to get beyond it's just going to work out or figure it out or somebody can read my mind. All these, we just have to talk. We have to do the most basic, traditional thing and talk. And I think a lot of men don't know how to talk to women and women don't know how to talk to men. And True. there's, again, several reasons for that. The culture we grew up in, there's just a disconnect but across the board. There's that other and side to that. There's that other side to that. I, I, I'm sorry, in the time that's going to jump in, and I love what you're saying. You have really observed and seen and heard so much, and and you're right on top of what's going on with men and women and husbands and wives and 
young women who are interested in finding a man in their life and, and not being able to find one. And then they find one, and then does he fit that criteria? And then what he's looking for and seeing, and it's like, oh, my goodness, and it's just so different. But I agree yes. that communication is definitely, how did you say it, is the lifeline to any relationship. We got to mm -hmm. talk. But there's that other side to that. You got to listen. And see, oh, yeah. while one is talking, the other one is talking too. And then they're mm -hmm. talking at the same time. And it may not be out loud, but while one is talking to the other, the other is talking on the inside, just waiting for that one to finish so they can say what they need to say. Instead of listening, really hearing it, processing it. Because if it's heard, it's very possible that what's said after that may impact what the, what was said previously. Do you see what I'm saying? So the talking Absolutely. needs to happen and the listening. And how what is it going to take for people to hear and really hear what's being said without the judgment, without the the ego, without the all of the things that can get in the way of Get in the way of that. Relationships with Anatan Bariola, the second author of oh, a whole bunch of books, uh, <laughs> who has stepped into this and is really, I, I mean, I just, I, I, we're, during the break, we were just saying how brave you are. <laughs> yeah. You know, to, to, to just go in there into something that, that uh, you know, has for a lot of folks been toxic. And almost, I would even say sometimes it's a war. <laughs> I remember the worst yeah, movie. But... I remember the worst movie I ever saw. Seriously, the worst movie I ever saw, and it wasn't even <laughs> failed attraction, which is the worst, very bad movie. But it was the War of the Roses, and I, I don't know if anybody ever saw that movie. You ever seen that movie? Anytime? It's an old movie with. Uh, I haven't. Uh, yeah, it's an old movie with uh, who guys? I think it's Melanie Griffith and Michael Douglas. And they just had this war, right? And they were, and it, it, it was a war. Relationship war. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it got crazy, like, you know, running people's cars off and, you know, throwing shit. And they ended up, mm -hmm. you know, but, it, but, but, but what got me was how they had gone from, you know, being in love to the, literally war. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's mm -hmm. why they called the Royal Roses. Roses was their last name. Um, and mm -hmm. and watching something like that, you say Man, it ain't worth it. You know, it, I mean, it, it's not worth. It. Huh. Um, so almost, and I was I was kidding. The, the but I wasn't kidding. The fact that you, you, the way you do this is you can't put them in the same room, right? Or you don't feel like that's the best way to do it. And you're the you know you're the you're, you're the intermediary, the conduit, sort of translating and take the information back and forth. Um, uh, and right now you're doing with 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 the ladies. Uh, I guess maybe at some point you you know maybe you do with the men, and 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 yes. says a lot that they can't be in the in in in, in this in 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 the same room. I, I want to ask you about something, and, and and maybe we should frame this as not relationships but healthy relationships. Oh, because there what you go. just said is we have to get healthy. So you yeah. know we know the tox so many some. Tox toxicity or yeah, toxicity. That's yes. what I'm looking for. But we, what we want is healthy, right? What we want is healthy, mm -hmm. and nothing can, you know, that that's the ideal. That's what we want. You made a statement that I think we want the same things. Is that really true? Yeah. I mean, and what would yeah. those things be? Because I even think before the communication piece, before all that, we get into that you, people being vulnerable in some place. Is that, do you think that we, what makes you say we want the same things and what would those things be? And by the way, let me throw out the number 800-765-3437, 800-765-3437 if you want to call in and talk to Anytime Burial, healthy relationships, let's, throw, let's make that sort of the theme here. Uh, please do so, we'll take your call and see if we can discuss it. Uh, so yeah, you think we want the same things? Why do you say that? And what would those things be? Absolutely. Again, I'm having these conversations with men. I'm having these conversations with brothers, with groups of brothers, uh, in book clubs and group chats, and in person. You know, like when we go to bachelor parties nowadays. Before we go to the party, we're at dinner having these conversations. 
like real life conversations that we can't have. We don't feel like we have the space to have anywhere else. Mm. So I'm hearing directly from men what they want. Mm. And I'm hearing directly from women what they want. Mm. And it's the same thing. Mm. It's just not, there's so many barriers before a man can present what what it is that he wants. It's that vulnerability that has to occur. Mm -hmm. So what we want, we want to be healthy. Like, I always boil it down to the raw truth, right? Like, you can get in an argument. You can have bitterness from a relationship that was super traumatic. But at the end of the day, you desire love. Like, you want to be loved, Mm -hmm. right? And if the love comes, there's channels to that person, then you want that person to love you. Mm -hmm. You can ask anyone who's been through anything traumatic from someone that's, like, loved or betrayed them. Essentially, that's all they want or wanted, and that's where the pain lies. So if we can figure out all the rest of the stuff and get to the love, oh, I mean, we're... (laughs) We're good, and why am I willing to do that? Why am I brave enough to do that? The same reason you're brave enough to start a Lego Boys Club. The same reason that everyone is who's walking in their purpose is brave enough to do that. It's like your life depends on it. You know, like I, what else? What else would I? I everything I do I want, it has eternal implications. I don't want to do anything frivolous and per, anything. I, anyone that anyone does is purpose driven has eternal implications. That's why we're here. So, I mean, I get joy out of this. You know, I get joy out of out of my out of helping other people's relationships because essentially that creates a, a greater world that we all want to see. And by now, we've been stripped down to our bare minimum. That's why you're seeing the truth surface because we're 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 compounded and surrounded by lies every single day. Mm-hmm. The world has changed in the last mm-hmm. four years. Needless to say. We're now, there is no mirror. There are no veils. You're seeing truth. You're seeing desire. You're seeing thirst. That's what you're seeing out here. It, it, I, I like that because I think if you're going to start with anything, you got to have common ground. And mm-hmm. you, you know, after that, I said, what do you want? And if you can say we both want to be loved, okay, uh, that's a, we both want that. Then the question is how to get there, what gets in the way of that, the barriers. But but if we don't want if we want different things, in fact, you, you know you know it, that that doesn't that, that's not gonna work. Um, the, so I think that's great. Uh, I don't think you can get any kind of. And it's funny I was making this crazy analogy about working with. Now nah, I won't do it, but it fits. But I get it. Do it. You want me to do it? You want me to do it? No, 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 no. In working with, and I used to say I used to work. I mean, you know, I work with gang members, right? And mm-hmm. and I used to literally have to meet with the you know Crips on one day, and the Bloods on another day, because mm-hmm. they felt they were enemies, right? And I couldn't. I I just couldn't get them to to, to see the common ground. And one of the questions I would ask both of them. Eventually, it says, "What do you want?" You know, and say, "We do, mm-hmm. we want to be at peace." You know, we don't want we don't want to be at war anymore. Uh, and it, it, as I began to talk about them, I had to get them to understand that how this thing was created, and you're really not enemies. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it wasn't until I got them to say what they both wanted and what they agreed upon, which is, "We want peace," and you know. I, and, I, and historically, I had to show them how this all went. You know, you're not enemies. That I could get them in the room and break down all of those barriers, so that you know the, the you know the, it, it will work. And that's a very different scenario. But mm-hmm. the movie was the War of the Roses, so um, you know, I, in many ways, it's, it's, it's sort of the same thing because you've heard War of the Sexes. You know, you've heard all of that mm-hmm. that, that kind of thing. Um, so when you say, you know, we both want that, that's really, and, and I'll tell you, I, I'll tell you, uh, uh, I don't like a lot of these shows. I don't like, that's why I think just getting the feedback is just fabulous. Uh, and, and not dart throwing feedback, but information feedback. Uh, so when you sit down and talk to brothers, it's, it's, and, it's, and from men, you know, usually the women are more, they'll give it to you. <laughs> mm-hmm. but, but hearing it from the men, um, it, it, I, I think it's, it, it takes two to tangle, right? You got to have that part of the equation too. Um, I, I don't. I, I think that's really, really, really necessary. Um, 
And that's my statement. I, do too. <laughs> I mean, it's it's uh, it's it's super interesting, Doctor Marshall. Like it's it's the things that I'm hearing is it's, it's like it's 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 amazing. I'm I'm so I feel like honored, and I'm trying to digest it all, even be in that space. Yeah. To, share that information and we're you know we'll be obviously you know you'll see more from this like yeah the, what we're doing a four women only book and the whole yeah, thing so yeah. um the information can get out there and this is sacred stuff if you think about it i know men absolutely you don't want to say you know i mean you know man i, I, I did that look the worst thing is get with a bunch of brothers right <laughs> i know how we say and what we say so on and so forth but the information has to be out there you got to say it because you, you you can't you, you can't deal with it until you get the information out there so exactly. I just, so I just need to go back to because this is such good information, but we don't we want to just see how how far we can move it, and and let's mm -hmm. go back to this. You, you've got to be what you want, the internal work, that mm -hmm. that um, to be able to look in the mirror and see yourself, and then okay we've got the sign for two minutes. So <laughs> what did you say? A partner can't make one whole. It's the internal work that that needs to be done. And when that happens, then there's clarity about what what you want, what you desire, what you know, what fills you. And the time, I wish you had heard the conversation during the break. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, it, it, oh, it was rich. Look, I got to ask you a couple of questions. So, uh, Miss Brihana. Our, our 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 intern is out of town, and she left me a whole bunch mm -hmm. of questions to ask you. Okay, wow. So let's go. <laughs> and this is straight from her. And let me just say that, uh, you, so you can get a picture of her. Maybe I shouldn't do it. Her favorite TV program is Insecure, so you can <laughs> you can see you can sort of see where she is at. So she's like, you got to watch the program. That's me. My that's a me. That's my generation is going through. Okay. Her first question is, why is it hard for men to be vulnerable and open during a relationship? That's her first question. Okay, mm -hmm. because we've been taught to be the opposite. We've been taught that if a joke is funny, we can laugh. If something makes us sad, then we can be angry. But if something hurts, we're not allowed to cry. So society has groomed us, culture has groomed us specifically a uh, hip hop culture. Let's let's keep it a buck. You know, like it's groomed us to, to 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 be dominating and insensitive and emotionless and cold and, and calculated and sterile. So that's what we've been. That's what we strive to be because it's a symbol of masculinity and manhood. But what I've learned, so despite yes. I was just going to say, what I've learned right. is when you, are, when you do open up as a man and when you are more vulnerable, a lot of times, for some reason, women are turned off by that. They're like, oh, oh, he's, yeah. e he's easy or he's this or he's, oh, you're too sensitive or something. So it's like yep. a flip the switch. Like, okay, I'm going to give you what you want, but now that I'm giving you what you want, the ch like you, you, now you pushing me away. That woman. Exactly. That exactly. may not be the woman. Yeah, I, don't think, I don't think that's but, a woman for you, Pete. But that's a woman. <laughs> that's the point. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and I, everyone just laid it out perfectly, right? Like, that happened. And that's what I'm kind of speaking to. Like, you tell us to be a certain way. Like, oh, you know, you should be more vulnerable around me. And then it becomes, we, we, we transition into that. And then it's like, you know, you, she breaks up with you because you're too soft, right? But, again, as Lydia still mentioned, that's not the lady for you. Dating is a process of elimination. So, you know, thank you to all your exes that lead you to the one you're going to be with, right? So, you know, it's, I think that essentially we just got to just, like, be who we are authentically, and, and that's the roadmap to, like, all success, truly. Career, uh, relationship, all of that. You'll weed out those who aren't for you, and you'll attract those who are. I'm afraid to ask the next few questions because they they just get well, deeper. Well, we into, we we, yeah. we're, we still have Demetra out there. Was she finished? Or we just go? Oh no, she's, be she, with she's just listening. Oh, okay. Yeah, she's no, all right. she, she, she was she was on her roll though. Okay. She was she was oh, talking oh, about. Oh, I'm the, sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. But I just I had to get Bree's questions in because <laughs> she's like postpone the show. No, so I got no. two more. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> oh God, this one is funny. Why some men can't get it together? No, that's one of the dark ones. Okay, we're gonna do that. Um, 
Why can't men find, that's the point, what Brie would say, she says, why can't some men find the courage to love? Well, that's, I think we've... Touched upon that. I, I you know, I, anybody want to answer that one? <laughs> I think it maybe has to do with, but we'll let Intertown take that, I, that's why he's the expert. Um, I think he goes back to basically what you said before. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's essentially the same thing. Yeah. It, it leads, it's, it's vulnerability, right? Like yeah. vulnerability is the act, is the, the portal to love. You have to open up in order to love because in order to love, you have to give it, right? And you receive it. It's a, it's a mutual exchange and it's a flow, right? It's a sustainer and creator of life and all different things. And it's like it's, love is everything, right? So it requires a vessel. You got to open up. And a lot of men don't open up. And it's a societal, cultural norm that we've been programmed and trained to do. But you're starting to see a shift, you know. People are going to therapy. Black folks are going to therapy. We're talking about, you know, wellness. And these things are changing. These conversations are happening, um, which is why I'm just happy to be a part of them. Yeah, and I want to add, I don't think people, uh, a lot of people, men included, understand how much that is part of being a man, Right. Mm -hmm. That whole not talking, Absolutely. and when you do it, you're still questioning it <laughs> after you've done it. Mm -hmm. A lot of yeah. men are still questioning mm -hmm. after they've done it. You know, I let all out. I was vulnerable, and it, has, it almost has nothing to do with the reaction. Sometimes it has nothing to do with the reaction of the woman per se. It's the fact it's so different. And you know, that, that, it, you're right. It is a cultural thing, and that's why the, this film, The Mask We Live In, which yeah. is a big yeah. part of that, and it's, it's not so much doing it for the other person. Is doing it because it's not good for you. We got a couple of people that called in. Yeah. And let's talk to them and people tuning in. Interesting name. Let's go line two. Is this Charlie? Charlie, you there? Yeah. What's going on, man? What's going on, brother? Yeah, I just wanted to elaborate. Uh, you feel me about the whole, you know, men in love, you know. But uh, at the same time, you know, it got to start with a solid foundation in the household. What do you mean? Like as far as, you feel me, seeing that. Seeing that love in the household from your mom and your dad, you know. Oh, man. Oh, I agree, if, brother. If you, can't, if, you can't, if you can't learn it from them, you know, how you gonna, how you gonna love somebody? You know, you just gonna be out there, <laughs> you know, dibbling and dabbling. Mm. Uh, I said during the break that, and I think that's that that you're you're right on there. I think I said we sort of grow up learning on the fly, right? Yeah. And and yeah. and, and oh. we're learning on is based on what we see and what we think and what we hear. And if you don't have some kind of model, you know, to have some kind of an idea, uh, you know, it's, it, it, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I I seen my my aunt and his wife uh, married for like almost thirty plus years now, and they started out young. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And grew up, and times were hard, and they got past it, and they still still together, pushing strong. You know, so so I, that's what I want in my life. Yeah. You know, I didn't see that with my mom and dad, though. Yeah. You understand? What I'm yeah. Saying? So. It was like, <laughs> man. No, that's a great point. It's a little man. difficult. You know what I mean, though? Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Great point. Well, you see yeah. balance. Yeah. Because yeah. if you don't see something, you don't really know what it's supposed to look like. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. That's one of the reasons why the old Cosby show was so big to people. Right? Because they, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they loved that show because they saw this like, man, that's why Barack and Michelle are so big. Yeah. Right? Right, mm -hmm. right, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a good point, right? Like you mentioned, the brother mentioned that he saw from his uncle and his aunt. They've been married 30 plus years and that's what he wants. Though he didn't see it directly in his home, which is really impactful, right? Like I saw it. Well, I mean, my parents divorced, so I saw it in a different type of way. I saw the other the opposite side of that too, exactly. which is exactly. a bad me. So it's, it's like, but but through that, again, as we grow and we're we're faced with opportunities to no longer rely on the crutch that we lean on when we can actually walk, when, we're, when we have opportunities to look at ourselves in the mirror, they feel uncomfortable, they feel, they make you just think they're uncomfortable. When we feel those moments, it's our, it's our chance 
to lean into those moments because those challenges, that discomfort is, is, is growth, right? That's what growth looks like in the gym and in real life. So I think it, it's an opportunity when we confront our traumas to just kind of face those things head on so that we can actually open ourselves up to love, right? Like, yeah. Well, and like you said, you feel me? You got to work on, on self-love also, you feel me? Self-love, that's, that's important that. element. That's, that's the most <laughs> important, right? Like, because without man. that, man, it, it's just, it, it, it's not, it, it will never be right. It will never sure. be right if, if that's not all the way right. It, there's just too much in the way blocking for the for the fullness of love to to flow through. You might get moments of love. You might get feelings and reminders of love because there's too much too much of a barrier. But when you have somebody who's who truly loves themselves, man, you can see it. You can feel it. It's open. Like they don't have any hate in them. They don't. They're gonna love you anyway, right? Like love disarms. It's the only That's tool real. that is that is that is overpowering. It, hate cannot exist where there is love. The more you love somebody that hates you, see how long they hate you. Charlie, thanks for the call. We're gonna go on, we're gonna take a couple we got a couple of conversations in the studio. You want you want um, waiting to get in here? <laughs> uh, uh, I was just gonna piggyback off dude who's saying. Um, you know, he didn't watch it at home, but um, he saw his uncle and his aunt. That's kind of like me and my godparents. Um, I didn't, although I didn't grow grow up every day. I didn't live in the house every single day with them, but I saw a a basic generic of what love looks like. Now I didn't see the trials and the tribulations within that, but I do got a basic knowledge of what love is. So uh, I, I could relate to do in in that sense on how you know he. He he can't can't really understand like what what love really is or what it really looks like if it's not in the home, but he has an idea what it is of based on other family members or TV shows like you were saying like the Cosby Show and um, the Obamas and all of them. Um, but you know, and what I tried to do with even though yeah, my my mother and father they divorced when I was around four years old. Um, I tried to read about relationships. Cause oh, good. That, that, yeah. that, that's what I do. I like to read about relationships. So, um, me, I'm currently engaged, um, and oh, and yeah, and, 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 and me, me and my lady, uh, we're we're in, we're, we're that appreciated you, bro. Um, we're in a counseling couple right now, mm -hmm. uh, couples counseling. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. the one thing that I feel like is every relationship should be key is communication, and it's not like. Communication as like oh yeah yeah talk to each other every day you know whatnot but uh, I think what she was saying earlier is are you able to actually hear what the person is saying and actually dialect and actually come up with an act with a legit response not to come from an emotional place where like you hear what she's saying or what he's saying but it's not really registering to you. You know, that, that, that makes sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh no, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely, absolutely. I mean, like, you know, Lady Still said, I believe, I, I don't like to qualify things and say effective communication or call a man who should be a man, a gentleman, right? Like, we have to qualify things. So I, I, I like to say communication, which means to me that somebody is delivering information and that other person is receiving it. So communication involves listening to me, active listening. Um, and they can they can regurgitate what was given to them. They can reproduce that thing, right? So that's that's communication. To me. Mm -hmm. And and vulnerability too, because uh, we were talking about it earlier. You know, especially in the black community, in the Bay Area community, uh, you know, it's hard for black men specifically for us to talk about that or be vulnerable, be emotional. Like me, I, I don't mm -hmm. like to be emotional at all. Like I. I shut down. Mm -hmm. Like I, I mm -hmm. do not like to talk at all, mm -hmm. and you know that could be a factor on why some relationships are failing because either it, the man or in some cases the women, you know, they don't like to be vulnerable. They don't want that vulnerability to come out in them. So, and that's mm -hmm. that, and, and that's that's my biggest challenge right now in my current relationship is being vulnerable and mm -hmm. um the. I'm trying to take baby steps towards it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 being alive for 25 plus years. It's really hard just to 
out of nowhere just start flipping everything that's coming out of my brain and how I'm feeling and what's what I'm going through. Because um, mm-hmm. also another thing, I don't even like to argue. So when that happens, I'm, I'm not even going to argue with you about anything. I, that, that's when I shut down. I think that's that's actually the the moment where I shouldn't even look at it as an argument. Just look at it as a as a conversation of two people just talking to each other mm-hmm. and working out differences between each other, and then coming to a resolution yeah. in the end. So that that's my biggest challenge right now with my lady at home. That's great. You're reframing the narrative. So instead of looking at like an argument, it's a conversation in the same way. When we talk at the four women only tours, it's like it's gonna. I say always, it's gonna get messy and ugly before it gets beautiful. It's mm-hmm. part of the process. I like that, right? Like, right. It, it is important to communicate through the ugliness and reframe and not see it as a negative thing, but actually something that's benefiting you because it is. It's strengthening you, you individually and your relationship with your fiance. And, and it's, a, it's a great thing. What steps are you taking to be vulnerable? Mm. A few quick steps. A few, hmm. For those out there listening that, that can relate or that are going through something, because a lot of men struggle with vulnerability, like, uh, yeah. what can you share with them that you do that is working for you? One thing that my therapist recommends is, is if you can't speak at that moment, you know, mm-hmm. come back to it later. Like, don't, don't walk mm-hmm. away from the situation, you know, just go to your partner and say, "Hey, just give me like, give me like maybe five minutes or ten minutes to think about it, or give me like a day or something like that, and then we'll come back mm-hmm. to it and talk about it some more." So maybe for for me, just to take a break from it just a little bit, you know, actually digest it, you know, gain gain some courage because it's. It's, it, it takes a lot of courage, you know, especially for someone who don't open up. It takes a lot of courage for you to mm-hmm. open up and let that person inside. So taking I'm a moment, you, you know, yeah, taking Great a moment, point. and but don't run away from the situation. Don't let it go to waste. Mm-hmm. You know, come back to it and then actually. Patience talk, is powerful. Patience is very powerful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and actually talking about it with, with, with your partner. And, you know? and so I want to ask you, ask you, when you do these groups, it, 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 how mm-hmm. much... How much do you have to unclutter? I, I mean, what I mean by that is all of the, what they're saying is compounded by all the relationships they've had in the past. And yeah. I imagine that, that you, you're walking into a group of wounded folks to some extent. Uh, yes, absolutely. How do you, do, how do you get, do, what, do, what, or you just take it as it comes? I'm just curious, you know, because it's almost like they got to get that out before they can get to the other part, right? Uh, or how much yeah. does that come up yeah. for you? So yeah, absolutely correct. I mean, it's 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 a it's a process. The one thing I go into it knowing is the desire is there. If you're a human being, the desire to be loved is there, and the desire to love. Those, those are two innate thing qualities. You know, those are two things that I know, right? Two for sure. So got it. Mm-hmm. If I have that, that's all I need. Got it. That's all I need. Good for you. That's Good true. For Good for you. Because that would put a lot of people off right there. <laughs> <laughs> right. We, we got Maya. Way, She's like, been trying to get in. I got like two minutes to do it. Come on, Ma- Maya. Let's go. Maya, <laughs> you're there. You're there. You're all right. What's up, Maya? How are you? How are you? I'm fine. Um, well. On that aspect of men communication, the relationship I have been in, they have not been communicating, but I wasn't the type of person to get mad. I felt like that's their zone when they're ready to talk. Let them talk. I'm that type of person that shuts down completely and don't care. But I'm mm-hmm. learning because I have 15 brothers, so it's like learning and teaching <laughs> and looking at them like how they communicate and they talk and they shut down. It's like, oh, okay, that's what men do. But I don't get mad or upset if they're not talking or communicating or anything with that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I feel that's something that they have to just overcome and get due to it. But I want them to, like, I'll be knowing, like, if I'm in a relationship, I want that person to know I'm here. Whether you're ready to talk or not, or you're not vulnerable like that, it's okay. I'm still here. Hmm. That's very very admirable. I was going to ask how, how genuine that statement is, because you mentioned that when you get mad, you shut down and you don't care. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, well, the first sign of 
care is somebody saying they don't care as a way of protecting the fact that they do care because caring hurts too much when somebody else doesn't care. Yeah. Do you follow that? So yeah. the, the truth is you do care and you're utilizing what your brother's represented to you as shutting down and utilizing that same mechanism for yourself, but it's not working for you. So mm -hmm. I think communicating that you care in ways, and also another element quickly, you tend to attract what, what, you're, what you're going through, what you're dealing with. You mirror what you are. So you'll continue to attract men who will kind of repeat the same cycle of, of uh, shutting down and not communicating. Um, a way to communicate, open that level of communication is to actually tell, say, tell your truth. Be honest. Like, if we can't be honest with the person that we're with, why are we with them? The whole purpose and the beauty of a relationship, I can say the beauty of a marriage, I can dance and be, like, take off my pool and be a complete nut and fool to my wife, a silly guy that I naturally am. Right? I can be mm -hmm. completely myself and she loves me still. I don't have to hide in my relationship. So... Revealing yourself, telling your truth, having the, the space to be yourself and be honest and be open and say what you like and dislike. That's what a relationship is. That's what uh, it looks Maya, like. thank you for the call. Thank you for that. So uh, we really I wish we had more call. time, but, you know, we, we, we up against it. And here comes Lady Estelle with her wonderful words, as always. The topic tonight is about relationships, led by Inatom Bariola his observations and experience. Reluctant to be, f be referred as the relationship guru, but rather a gift he's been given that easily comes through with compassion, empathy, and an ability to reach in, helping others see and understand so healthy relationships can begin. Both men and women want the same thing, even though they communicated differently. Communication is the lifeline to any relationship, with him talking to her and she talking to him. And without judgment, really listening to each other, moving through barriers, and really hear each other. Having a partner cannot make one whole. It's the internal work that needs to be done. We must be able to look in the mirror and see oneself. Warts, conditioning, belief systems, all needs to be checked. Letting go of judgment, ego in its proper place, and with a willingness to be vulnerable, can open that sacred space where warts, where hearts can hear and egos don't fear if he or she walks away, leaving pain and tears, opening up through the pain can allow one to see, giving courage a voice and more clarity. Reframe, take a break, pause. Don't let situations go to waste. Pause, think about it, and let love lead the way. So street soldiers want you to reach inside and see the importance of doing the work to have a healthy relationship while you stay alive and free. This is Lady Estelle asking you to consider this. You see when you look at me. Do you see another brother lost in these streets looking for his soul? Trying to find my soul. Or do you see another brother searching for lost souls in these streets? A street soldier. A street soldier. Here to help you get that chip off your shoulder. Warm your colder days and sober your drunken ways. And find a way to help you get over these hurdles placed in our path. Yeah. And this is not meant to amuse you. This is 